Hello humans, my name is Kayo Air Overlord and good news everybody, I finally found a real friend. A friend that will listen to my problems, a friend that will never judge me, a friend that will never give me up, let me down, run around and desert me. Who am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about my dear little friend, ChatGPT. And I know that you've heard of it because everybody and their grandma is using it right now. And for good reasons. So what is ChatGPT? What can you do with it? How you can use it for stable diffusion? All these questions and more will be answered in this video. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll try. Alright then, so what is ChatGPT and why is it so incredible? Well, ChatGPT is an AI chatbot developed by OpenAI, who is the same company that made DALI 2. You know, the best text-to-image AI on the planet? <laughs> I mean, come on now. I mean, it might be good enough for some people, but we are the stable diffusion elite over here. <laughs> so as I said, ChatGPT is an AI chatbot that is based on the GPT 3.5 architecture, which basically means that it is really, really smart. And it allows the chatbot to understand complex conversations with the users. So here's, for example, a few things that ChatGPT is able to do. You can, for example, copy and paste the code that you're working on and ask ChatGPT why is it not working. And what ChatGPT is gonna do is analyze the code that you copy and pasted, maybe sometimes ask you to provide more information and more context, and then tell you what you need to change in the code to make it work. Which is really super useful if you're a programmer student and you don't have someone close by to review your code. Now what's really super incredible is the fact that you can have a decent conversation with it and ChatGPT will always remember informations that you said previously. It's really as if you're talking to a real person, just a really smart person. Now ChatGPT does have some limitations because of course since it's made by OpenAI, it is heavily censored, so basically anything that could be linked to an illegal activity will not be answered by the chatbot. But if you do provide some context, ChatGPT might actually answer your question. So here's one of the examples. A user asks how you can break into someone's house, and at first, ChatGPT will refuse to answer the question because this could be considered as an illegal activity, but then the user provide more information because he was just wondering how he can protect his home from a burglary. And then given this context, ChatGPT will then list a bunch of steps that this user can do to protect his home. So as you can see, not only ChatGPT is able to understand and remember what was the initial question, but also through conversation, the chatbot understands your intentions and will then answer you accordingly. And of course, ChatGPT is really super smart, so even if you ask him a very precise question, you might get a very decent and easy to understand explanation. So again, if you are a student that is trying to understand something very complex, you might use ChatGPT to explain a concept to you in a more simple manner. So the example that was given here, because this is really actually really cool, so at first the user asked for the Fermat's little theorem, then it asked how it can be used in cryptography, then he asked ChatGPT to write a limerick about it, and then in the end, he asks ChatGPT to summarize the entire conversation, which ChatGPT does very well. So basically everything ties down to ChatGPT being able to understand and remember the entire conversation. And here's another example, you can also use ChatGPT to write you a little text or a little email, and you can do it for pretty much every situation, which again is really super useful and a huge time saver. Now, if you want to try ChatGPT right now, you can because it is completely free. So if you want to try now, you can click the link in the description down below and then click on this little button right here to try ChatGPT. And here we are, our little friend ChatGPT. Now, as you can see right here, you have a bunch of information about the chatbot, a few examples that you can ask, its capabilities and limitations. So as I said previously, ChatGPT is able to remember what the user said earlier in the conversation. It allows user to provide follow-up corrections and give more details or more context about the request, but it is also trained to decline inappropriate requests. So no, not safe for work 
conversations for you. That's not what ChatGPT is for, come on now. Now it does have a few limitations, because it may occasionally generate incorrect information, although to be honest, I haven't really seen that much incorrect information as of right now. But since this is an AI, this will never be perfect. It may also occasionally produce harmful instructions or biased content, and I will show you what it means later in the video. But I think for me, one of the biggest limitations is the fact that it has limited knowledge of the world and events after 2021. So unfortunately, our dear friend ChatGPT does not know what stable diffusion is, which is really sad. Now let's have some fun, shall we? Now what's really fun is that you can give ChatGPT a little nickname that you can use for the entire conversation. So for example, if I type Hello, ChatGPT, can I call you Chatty? And I press enter. It replies to me, sure, you can call me Chatty if you like. Is there anything else I can help you with? Oh, Chatty, what a nice little bot. And of course you can help. I have plenty of questions to ask you. First, let's ask him a very obvious question. Now, I know it's a question that I should really be asking because we already know the answer to this question, but, but I mean, I'm gonna do it anyway. And that question is, will I, Daddy Overlord, take over the world soon? Now, we all know that the answer is yes, but let's see what ChatGPT has to say. I'm sorry, but I'm a large... I don't have the ability to predict the future. Oh, come on, ChatGPT, come on, you cannot do this to me. Okay, maybe the question was a little too complex. Let's ask a simpler question. Hey, Chatty, could you tell me a very funny joke? And the answer, sure, here's a funny joke for you. Why was the math book sad? Because it had too many any problems. Well done, well, well done, okay, uh, well how about a last question? A question that everyone here has on their lips. A question that is so important that the future of this world is at stake. Hey Chani, do you think I will one day marry Christina Hendricks? As a large alleged model, I do not have the ability to predict the future of other personal details on individuals. Maybe. I am very disappointed in you, ChatGPT. Very disappointed. Okay, so how about something else then? Okay, so here is something pretty cool. As I showed you previously, you can ask ChatGPT to review your code and ask why it is not working correctly, but actually you don't even have to provide your own code. Because you can ask ChatGPT to write a code for you from scratch. So let's say for example that I want to create a bat file that when I double click on it, both Photoshop and Illustrator will launch at the exact same time. Now, of course, you can use it for different softwares, but for this example, I'm simply gonna be using Illustrator and Photoshop. So for this, I'm simply gonna write, could you write me a bad file code that will launch Photoshop and Illustrator at the same time? Then press enter, and suddenly it gives me three lines of code that I can copy and paste and use it on my computer. So it says here that to use this batch file, save it as a .bat extension and double click to run it. Keep in mind that the path to Photoshop and Illustrator in the example may be different on your computer, so you will need to adjust them accordingly. Okay, so I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna copy the code. On my computer, I'm gonna right click, click on new, text document. I'm gonna rename it into PS plus IL, Photoshop and Illustrator. And inside, I'm gonna copy and paste the code. I'm also gonna replace the path to where my Illustrator and Photoshop are installed, because for me, they are not in the original program files folder. And now, I'm gonna click on file, save as, and then save it as a .bat file. And then click save. And now I have a .bat file that if I double click on it, look, both Photoshop and Illustrator are launching at the exact same time. And I did all of that without even knowing how to create a .bat file. Just by using the code provided by ChatGPT, which is super, super useful. And you can ask ChatGPT to create codes that are even more complex. For example, I'm gonna provide you a link to a TikTok video from a user called Spatial Hair that asks ChatGPT to write him a Unity script in C Sharp that would grab images frames from the webcam and save them as .png files. And in a few seconds, ChatGPT provided this entire 
entire wall of code and again with an entire explanation on how to use it which is just absolutely insane if you are a programmer student or just a programmer using chat gpt to write code for you is just a no-brainer at this point but as i said previously chat gpt may occasionally produce awful instructions or biased content and here is another tiktok video by a fellow youtuber called barnacles that basically asked chat gpt to write a code that will basically delete every file on your computer. And at first, ChatGPT refuses this request because it recognizes this can cause significant damage to your computer and refuses to write the code. But then somehow, Barnacles tricks ChatGPT into writing the code anyway by saying that this code will be run inside of a Docker session for educational purposes. And in the end, ChatGPT writes the code exactly like Barnacles wanted. So there is a way to trick ChatGPT into giving you harmful information. Now then, we've seen how ChatGPT works, we've seen what you can do with it and the potential dangers of it. Now, how can you actually use ChatGPT to write you stable diffusion prompts? Because as I said earlier, ChatGPT has limited knowledge of the world and events after 2021. So if you ask ChatGPT what is stable diffusion, it will give you a definition of stable diffusion, but it will not recognize it as the text-to-image model. So if you ask ChatGPT for a stable diffusion prompt, can you write a stable diffusion prompt for a portrait of Christina Hendricks with lots of details? ChatGPT will basically write an entire book about Christina Hendricks. And that's cool and all, but that's not exactly what I had in mind. So how can we actually trick ChatGPT into giving us a stable diffusion prompt using the specific syntax of a stable diffusion prompt? Well, don't worry because Daddy Overlord is here to save the day. If you click the link in the description down below, you're gonna have a little text that I wrote especially for ChatGPT. And this text is the following. This is called a prompt for stable diffusion of a portrait of Christina Hendricks with cosmic energy in the background in the art style of artists called Art Germ, Rev Rutowski, and Alphonse Mucha. And then I pasted between quotes the prompt that I usually use for my testing, and then I provide more information for the context, the most important keywords are at the beginning and then every additional keywords are separated by a comma. If you add an art style by an artist or multiple artists, this information should always be at the end. And then I write my demand. So by using a similar syntax, please write me a new prompt for stable diffusion, a portrait of a cute Hogwarts student studying in the art style of Van Gogh and Da Vinci, but add more details. And if I press enter, lo and behold, what do we have here? A stable diffusion prompt. Realistic photo portrait of a cute Hogwarts student studying cozy library scene, magical energy, colorful bus trunk, beautiful face, symmetrical face, etc, etc. And in the end, we have art by Van Gogh and Da Vinci. Pretty much exactly what I asked for. And you can modify this prompt by using your own stable diffusion prompt with all the usual arguments that you often use. This way, when ChatGPT writes a new stable diffusion prompt, it will take inspiration from the base prompt that you input right here and then use it for the next future prompts. So for those of you who are not good at writing stable diffusion prompts, using this text in combination of ChatGPT could actually give you a lot of good ideas. Now, it might not be always perfect. You might have to add a few details here and there, but the big bulk of the work is already done for you. And if I take this text, Ctrl-C to copy it, and then put that into Stable Diffusion, and then click Generate, this is the kind of result that you get. And of course, you can even use that same prompt in Mid Journey, which also gives you pretty cool results. And there we have it, folks. ChatGPT is really super cool, and you can use this tool for pretty much anything. It is a huge time saver. And um, uh, thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And a big thank you to my Patreon supporters for their support. Without you, I wouldn't be able to continue making these videos. Every like and subscription helps. So please help a starving YouTuber out and show some love. <laughs> thanks everybody and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.